Good evening, everyone. First of all, I would like to thank God for giving me an opportunity to discuss to you one of my favorite topic whenever I am preaching in a crusade and whenever I am giving a Bible study <coughs> about heaven. Um, actually, uh, this is my first time to have a series about this topic in a in, in this kind of uh, program like a worship. But whenever I am actually discussing heaven in a Bible study, there is this one thing that I've noticed those who are uh, to those people I am giving Bible study. You know, every time I discuss this, all I can see to those, to those people whom I am giving Bible study is that there is this smile or happiness that I can see to them that I've never seen in their faces when I discuss other topics. So tonight, I hope that as we will discuss this topic, there will also be this smile from our face that I can be able to see as we discover what really heaven is. But before we continue, we continue on with our study tonight, let us bow our heads for a word of prayer. Let us pray. Our dear kind Heavenly Father, we'd like to thank you, Lord, for giving us an opportunity to study about, about your word. Lord, tonight we are praying that may the Holy Spirit be upon us so that we can be able to discover something about your word. Lord, we are praying that may you give us the knowledge and wisdom that we need so that we can be able to get the message that you have prepared for us tonight. Bless us, Lord, and forgive us from all the sins that we have committed against thee in Christ's holy name we pray. Amen. Our theme for the whole series is Heaven, Exploring Our Eternal Home. So, starting tonight, we will have a tour in heaven. But we all know that no one from us have been actually there. And while I was actually trying to study more about heaven, so far, I've never encounter someone who actually doesn't believe in heaven. I don't know if you have met someone, but for me, I haven't met someone who doesn't believe in heaven. But when I try to, as I try to study, there is this something that I've uh, discovered. We have the same belief that heaven is real, but there is this belief of some people about when we will be going to heaven. Some people believe that if you die and you are good, you will go directly to heaven. But tonight, we will discover it straight from the Bible and let, we will try to see what the Bible really says about heaven. Who among you here knows this child? You know him? It was my picture. Joke lang. <laughs> Who among you here have seen this movie? Heaven is for real. How was the movie? I haven't watched the movie actually. What? Creepy. <laughs> why? Can you share us why? I haven't seen this movie actually. I just saw it. I, I, actually, I have this movie in my laptop. I don't know how I come I have this movie, but I haven't tried to watch the movie. Why is it creepy? Is there something wrong about this child? Actually, 
when I try to look at the, int look at the internet and try to look at some of the comments about this movie, according to what I've heard from my pastor, in this movie, I don't know if it is right, I don't know if the pastor is right. This, in this movie, th this child had a near-death experience. Is it right? Oh, where are those who watch the movie? Is it right? Yes. And during that near-death experience, this child had a chance, I don't know how, to, so, to see heaven. He was able to see heaven. I don't know how it happened, but that is what happened. And it might be that we have heard from other people or about heaven. But just like but just like what I've said a while ago, we will study heaven from the Bible. It is not we will not study it according to how this child saw it, but we will study it from the Bible. The title of the message for tonight is This World is Not My Home. Now the first question for us tonight is what does the Bible say about heaven? Or what does how does the Bible define heaven? According to my Esau, I don't know if you know that. The word heaven in e English versions of the Bible is commonly translated from the Hebrew. It, it is pronounced as Shamaim and the Greek Oranos. The meaning of both words is that which is high or above. And if, we, if you will look at heaven in the Bible, it is actually uh, describing or it refers to three things. First is that atmospheric heaven which is where you can see the clouds. And the astronomic or stellar heavens wherein you can see the stars. And the last is the dwelling place of God. And for, for our study, we will not focus on the first two, but we will study the heaven, which is the dwelling place of God. And what does the Bible say about it? What? is most interesting about this heaven is that the Bible gives us a promise about heaven. And I'm sure you know where it can be found. It says in John 14, 1 to, one to 2, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. Usually, if you, uh, whenever this text is being read or being used, the verse 3 is together with verse 1 and 2. But tonight, for our first night, we will study only the first two verses, and tomorrow we will study the verse 3. It says, sir, in my father's house are many mansions. Any? The Greek word for mansions is Monet. I don't know if my pronunciation is right, but I, the good thing is that, that my teacher is not here, and I already passed the subject. <laughs> and it means abiding or dwelling place. It means that the promise of God from John 14 to about the mansions that, I, that God is preparing for us is referring to real homes. And before I was really wondering, why does God to have used home? Or why does God give us a promise about a home in, in the place where he is dwelling? Why not God use the word uh, a resort? What is, more, what is better, your home or the resort? Why is it that God said, I, I will prepare a place for you wherein it will be a five-star hotel? What will you choose? 
Five star hotel. <laughs> Isn't it much better? You know, wh when I was actually contemplating on this, there is this something that came into my mind. You know, I have been into different places for so many years because of Voice of Youth and some mission trips. And I ha and throughout those years, I had a chance to sleep in places that are really, they called it house, but it doesn't look like a house. You know, there was a time wherein we had a, we slept in a, they called it house, but they told us that before that house is a place for chickens. And since it is not being used anymore, they, that is what we use during our, one of our mission trip. And for two, more than two months, we stayed in the house of the chickens. There was, there is even, there is also a time wherein you, I am not uh, discouraging you to join Voice of Youth, but this, this, all of these are actually during my Voice of Youth. There was a time wherein, during one of my Voice of Youth, actually this is during my first Voice of Youth, we slept in a house wherein, uh, in the place where we are sleeping, Whenever, whenever we woke up every morning, that is also the place where we are doing our worship. And that is also the same place wherein it is just a small room. We slept there with the, and, uh, and when we woke up, we do the worship. And that, there is, that is also the place where we do our, where, where we eat. So we stayed in a small room where we, there we do everything. And about three to four steps from where we eat and sleep is the CR, which means that if you, if someone will uh, express her, his or her bad feelings inside, while we are eating, everyone will be in danger. And we, and whenever I join Voice of Youth during the last days of my voice of youth, I always think of our house because I am always becoming so excited going home simply because just like what others are saying, there is no place like home. And God gave, uh, and God uses, uh, uh, as I reflect on it, God uses the term home because he wants us to feel Comfortable with a place where he will be, uh, uh, where he will actually bring us. And it says, "If it were not so, I would have told you." When I actually read this, read this part, it gives me an assurance that the promise of God about uh, the, the, this place is really true. Yeah, I got to prepare a place for you. In summary, Jesus Christ is preparing a home for us in the place where God dwells, which is heaven. You have seen the word summary, but we are not done yet. We are just on the introduction. We are done with the introduction. Now, if heaven is the place wherein God will bring us, and this is the place where God dwells, what kind of wait lang, wala pa. <laughs> Relax ka lang. <laughs> what kind of home is heaven? If heaven is a home that God prepares for us, what kind of home is heaven? Before I we go to that, let me ask you something. How will you describe your ideal home or ideal house? Do you have any ideal home? How do you describe it? How? I will be showing to you a picture, but it was, it was already shown a while ago. <laughs> Who among you here knows where this place is? Huh? Where? Isan Pumang? Burakay? Wrong. 
Who will who wants to guess? I have here one peso as a prize. <laughs> Doctor, this is one of my dream place before. Before. Who among you here are from Mindoro? No one? There is one. <laughs> this place is not in Mindoro. Who among you here are from Batangas? This place is from Batangas. Huh? You were shocked? Now you will have a good place to go. Who among you here knows uh, Ia Villana, Drew Arellano? This is, this is the place where they got mar married. It is actually in Nasugbu, Batangas. You want to go here? And I had a chance to actually visit the place for free. Uh, I cannot remember when, but I think it was two years ago when I was invited by our president to join him in, in a crusade and in a Sogbo. And there are some Adventists who are staying in this place. That's why we had a chance to be there. And the next place, this is my next favorite place. Don't look at my picture. This is in Palawan, my next favorite place. Actually, before it was, it is my first favorite place, but now it is only the second. We also had a chance to go there during last December, during our boys retreat. Actually, these places are beautiful places. But tonight, we will study, we will try to see if there, if there is, uh, if this place can be really compared to what God is preparing for us in heaven. The first thing we will try to see is the physical description of heaven. Uh, uh, the first is its light. You know, light is a big, uh, it's a very important uh, part of our life. You know, I know you know that because most of there are times we're in, most of the time, AUP has brought out. In Revelation 21, 23 to 25, it says, And the city had no need of the sun, nor of the moon, that they may shine in it. For the glory of God did light in it, and the lamp of it is the lamp. And the nation of the saved in its light shall walk, and the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it. And its gates shall not at all be shut by day, for night shall not be there. It says here, God's glory illuminates the city, making the light of sun and moon superfluous. Nor dark alleys will mar the new Jerusalem, for the walls and streets are translucent, and there shall be no night there. They need no lamp nor light of the sun, for the Lord God gives them light. So according to this text, in heaven, we do not need Meralco anymore. In heaven, we will not pay our electric bills anymore because in heaven, the light, our light will be the glory of God. And in heaven, it will be a very uh, good place to stay because in, there will be no dark place in heaven. One time I had a, I, I have to go to a, to a friend in one of a, in a subdivision. It was night time and well, I don't know how it, it happened that that subdivision doesn't have a lot of light that I have to actually walk in the middle of the dark just to be on the house of my friend. But in heaven, it will not be like that. This is the, this is one of the interesting part about heaven. It says here that the city of heaven, is, the shape is actually square. And according to what I've read, the All the sides are equal, even the 
height. I don't know how it happened, but that is heaven. And according to that, the measurement is 12,000 stadia, which is, uh, according to what I've read, equivalent to 2,220 kilometers or 1,380 miles. Who among you here uh, knows how long is 2,220 kilometers? I don't know. And according to what I've read, the materials is pure gold. It is not the store which is pure gold but color green. This pure gold is actually pure gold. And according to what I've read, it is like a uh, glass. And according to the, the wall is made up of jasper, which is a precious stone. And if it, it, the measurement is 144 cubits or 200 feet. And its foundation are made of, of precious gems. Actually, heaven, just if you just base it on how it is made, heaven is really a beautiful place. Now we will study about what kind of life will there be in heaven. In Revelation 22, verse 1 and 2, it says here, And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river was there a tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. It says here, from the throne of God in the center of the city flows the river of water of life. And it says here, and like a banyan tree with multiple tracks, the tree of life grows on either side of the river. Its twelve fruits contain the vital elements the human race has gone without since Aram and Eve had to leave Eden, the antidote for aging, burnout, and simple fatigue. You know, this is telling us that in heaven, there is this, uh, there is something that actually was gone when Aram and Eve committed sin. That is why we are now experiencing tiredness and fatigue. So it says, those who eat the fruit of this tree need no night in which to rest, for in the new earth they will never feel tired. In heaven, we do not need to rest for the night because our energy will be enough until we stay there. And heaven is also a joyful home. It says in Isaiah 65, 18 to 19, But be ye glad and rejoice forever in that which I create for. Great for behold, I create Jerusalem a rejoicing, and her people a joy. And I will rejoice in Jerusalem and joy in my people, and the voice of weeping shall be no more heard in her, nor the voice of crying. And Isaiah 35, 5 and 6. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. Then shall the lame man leap as an heart, and the tongue of the dumb. It says here, there will be no more sound of weeping or cry of distress. The blind would see, the lame jump, the deaf, deaf near, hear, the dumb sing. The city's inhabitants would no longer be called forsaken or desolate. Gloom and depression would be banished from the glory New Jerusalem. It says here that in this place, in heaven, there will be no more crying. You will never experience being brokenhearted. In heaven, there will be no, there will no more, there'll be no more time wherein we will feel stress because of what we did. In heaven, we will never experience crying because we failed in something that we did. In heaven, we will not be discouraged because all of the things that we will be seeing are pleasant to our eyes. And, it's, and it says also there that there will be no more blind. Everybody can be able to sing. Everybody will be in a good condition. And it says here, a, a heaven is also a peaceful home. In Isaiah 11, 6 to 9, 
69. The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid, and the calf and the li young lion and the fatting, fatling together, and the little child shall lead them, and the cow and the bear shall feed. Their young one shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. And the sucking child shall play on the hole of the ass, and the wind child shall put his son in the cockatrice den. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. You know, when I read this text, it, it actually teach me that in heaven, there will be no more bad or negative thoughts that will came into the mind of every living creature there. So there, no one will actually think of hurting other people. No one will think of doing something bad against someone. That's why it will be a peaceful home. Because in heaven, everyone will think only the best and the good for others. It says here, in this joyful kingdom, every kind of enmity and hostility will disappear. Harmony and peace will exist, not merely among humans, but also among animals. You know, if here in the, this world, if you go to a zoo or a park, animals are in a cage because they might do something or they, must, they might bite someone there, we will be able to play with them. In heaven, we will be able to experience playing with those animals that we are actually afraid of. And in heaven, we will experience uh, being with, this, with those animals, not seeing them not on a cage, but playing with us. You know, what makes heaven a best place to live? You know, we all know that heaven is a beautiful place. The materials that is used to make heaven are the precious materials. It is made of pure gold, and it is a very beautiful place to live, and it is a very enjoying place to live because of it is a place full of peace and joy. It is a place where we can experience the best experience that we cannot ever have in this world. But none of those things will make heaven the best place to live. There is still something more than that beautiful place that makes heaven a beautiful place. And that is what makes heaven a heaven. It says here, there is only a peaceful fellowship of love among all creatures and all nations under the Messiah's government. Actually, when I read this uh, statement, there's this something that I noticed that makes heaven really a very enjoying place to live. And that is the last two words of the statement. It says here, <coughs> Messiah's government. What does that mean? Heaven will, be, heaven will become a beautiful and peaceful place because there God is the one ruling heaven. It will be a beautiful place because God is there to make things peaceful and joyful. Actually, what makes heaven, uh, what, what makes earth uh, a very bad place to live is, is because sin is the one ruling this earth. It is because that when, sins, when sin came into this earth, everything that God has made were gone. The beautiful things that God made was all gone. And in heaven, it will be the time wherein God will be the one ruling. And that is what will make it a loving place, place to live. It says in Zechariah 49, And the Lord shall be king over all the earth. In that day shall there be one Lord, and his name 
one. During this time, only God will be the one ruling. There will be no more sin. That is why heaven is the best place to live. Heaven will not be heaven without God. And then, and <coughs> it says, your fellow pilgrim, we are still amid the shadows and turmoil of earthly activities, but soon our Savior is to appear to bring deliverance and rest. Let us by faith behold the blessed hereafter as featured by the hand of God. He who died for the sins of the world is opening wide the gates of paradise to all who believe on him. Soon the battle will have been fought, the victory won. Soon we shall see him in whom our hopes of eternal life are centered. And in, in his presence the trial and sufferings of this life will seem as nothingness. The former things shall not be remembered nor come into mind. This is from the book Heaven. You know, <coughs> as I try to imagine the life I have been, the, the, the life I experienced here on earth, and as I discover the beauty of heaven that God has prepared for us, there is only one thing that came into my mind. I don't want to live in this world anymore. God taught me that if there could be anything that I could desire for, that is to be with him in the heaven where he, I will have a chance to be with him forever. In the place where I will never experience suffering. Two years ago, my grandfather died, the father of my mother. And I was in a crusade during the time in Las Piñas. And my sister, when my sister texted me in and informed me that my grandfather, our grandfather died. And the first person that came into my mind back then is my mother. So I tried to call my mother and the first thing that I've heard from my mother is her cry. You know, it, during the time, it, it really broke my heart to hear my mother crying and I cannot comfort her because I am in a, in a far place. And as I uh, try to look back on those days, I really had a hard time speaking during the night because of what happened. And that, since that day, I cannot remember, I, I, I cannot forget how sin affected this world and how, how sin ruined what God has actually given us. But tonight, God is telling us that this is not the end of our life. Despite of the sin that ruled this world, time will come that God will rule and that will be in heaven, in a place where we will never experience sadness, crying, and being, uh, and, and being uh, disappointed, being discouraged because that place where God will rule is a place where love will also rule. And that place is a home that God wants to pre prepare for us. I don't know the problem in your homes. I don't know the struggles that you have in your homes. But God is telling us tonight that despite of the challenges that we are facing in our homes, Despite that it might be the worst home that you can ever have in this world. In the home where God is actually preparing for us. It will be a different one. So tonight, as we end our study, I hope and pray that more than anything else in this world, that it will be the desire of our heart 
to be part of those people who will be in the heaven where God rules in love. I hope that we will dis be desiring more than anything else in this world for that home wherein we will never, ex we will never experience what we have experienced in this world. So tonight, before we sleep, let us try to ask God to help us to have this desire in our heart. And I hope and pray that when this moment will come, all of us will be there. God bless us all.